Whether you live in Europe or the United States or anywhere else in the world, you probably heard about these protective devices called uh, GFCIs or RCDs, devices that detect uh, a leak to the ground, what they call a ground fault, and protect you from it. So let's talk about that. Well, here's how probably an average person pictures someone getting shocked by electricity. You know, notice the two different outlets depending on where you live, doesn't matter. Uh, so they picture a person grabbing two wires, a hot and neutral, either coming out of the wall outlet or just wires sticking out of the wall and getting zapped. Well, that is true. You can indeed get zapped that way, although that's a lot less common. Uh, the electric shocks uh, happen by diff different scenarios that we're going to describe shortly. But what is true is that, yeah, you indeed are going to get hurt. And how are you going to get hurt? Uh, you know, Hollywood movies uh, sometimes make, make light of electric shocks and they, they show things like, you know, smoke coming out, hair, hair standing up. Well, it's obviously it's nothing to laugh about in real life and, um, you know, such effects are probably true if you were to get shocked by a uh, high voltage, uh, probably something over 400, 480 volts. With uh, household voltages, 230 or 120, the effects are going to be different first to suffer is going to be your heart. On, on the exterior, you might not even get uh, harmed at all. You, there might be no signs of uh, even a burn, but on the inside, the picture is quite different. Again, the first to suffer is your heart. So let's talk about that. So in, in the normal conditions, your heart works at a regular cadence, at a regular rhythm, uh, pumping blood throughout your body. And your central nervous system sends those electrical systems to your heart, to your heart's muscles, making it contract. Well, when uh, a household great electricity at 120 or 230 volts passes through you, uh, that, those signals get disrupted. And your heart palpitations, uh, your heart contractions become irregular. And uh, as any other machine, a heart is a machine after all, uh, working outside of its normal conditions, uh, it stops working correctly or just ceases to work altogether. Uh, causing the condition called atrial fibrillation. Uh, the fibrillator, uh, a machine you've probably seen in ER shows, uh, does the opposite. It tries to restart the heart's normal rhythm. Fibrillation is the seizure, is the stoppage of the heart's normal work. Um, so why heart? If you look at the, uh, uh, at the person's uh, vascular system, cardiovascular system, uh, all the blood vessels going through a person's body, obviously they're everywhere, and they're perfect conductors of electricity because they're filled with a uh, salty liquid, i.e. blood. And all of those vessels go to and from the heart. They go through the heart. So any current going through the body primarily is going to go through the heart. That is why. So let's look at, at the standard uh, household circuit, right? Uh, a hot or phase wire goes to uh, whatever the device, be it a lamp or motor, uh, a vacuum, vacuum cleaner, what have you. And a neutral wire goes to it as well. Neutral wire is grounded somewhere, i.e. it's connected to planet Earth with a system of ground rods. And why that is important, you're gonna, so you're gonna see later. So a person uh, approaches this setup and let's suppose that there is a ground fault somewhere, meaning the hot wire is touching the outside, the metal uh, outside by uh, the metal outside of, of this uh, electrical device of this uh, appliance right or there is a bare wire somewhere so the person touches that naturally they get shocked now how do they get shocked well they create an additional circuit see this system when it works correctly creates a circuit there is a round you know electricity is coming in roughly speaking even though with AC it's not quite in and out, but you, you get the point. Electricity is coming in, does its work in a device, and it leaves through the neutral. Well, in this case, when a person touches the hot wire, the electricity starts going through him or her. If they're standing on a conductive surface that's connected to the ground, the electricity is going to go through the person to return to the source. Electricity doesn't go to the ground, even though most of the times that that's the case. It uses the ground to return to the source a lot of times. So when becoming an additional part of the circuit, an additional circuit, that's how you get hurt. That's how you get zapped in this kind of scenario when there is a ground fault uh, to the appliance body or there is a bare wire. 
So let's sum up what we've learned so far. Uh, however, the electricity passes through you, whether it's directly from hot to neutral, or you inadvertently become another circuit by touching a hot and uh, the current going to the ground through you. Uh, the body, your body uh, suffers. Primarily, it's your heart. And that's because uh, the blood, your, your cardiovascular system is a good system of conductors. So how do you prevent that? How do you prevent electricity from harming you? Well, uh, in this kind of scenario, there's really nothing you can do. There's no device that will, uh, that will di distinguish you from a regular appliance. In this kind of scenario, we just, just straight out grab the hot and the neutral to any device, you would look like another appliance. But this is not a very common scenario for a shock, like I said before. This is. And under this scenario, what will help you is a GFCI or an RCD a device that constantly monitors the current on the hot conductor, compares it to the current on the neutral conductor, and if there is any disparity, if there's any difference, then it knows, quote unquote, that there is electricity escaping somewhere, possibly through a person's body, and what it does is it powers down the circuit whenever it detects such a condition. Now, let's talk about the electrical properties of human body. Uh, specifically about resistance. Uh, if you've done any sort of electricity studies, if you studied physics, uh, you know that uh, the resistance is a property of any conductor, basically how well it conducts or does not conduct uh, electricity. So uh, like tip to one arm to the, t or to the tip of the other, it's a thousand ohms. Same thing with like, the bottom of your foot to any of the arms. Uh, your midsection, uh, the middle of your body, uh, to any any one of your arms and any one of your, the, the tip of your hand, uh, 500 ohms. Same thing, head to hand, uh, 500. Your elbow to hand is 750, and so on. So, what does that mean? So, in this scenario, when the electricity is escaping uh, a circuit through you, well, uh, if the current, if the if the voltage in in that circuit is 230 volts. Uh, divide that by, by 1,000 ohms, because remember, tip of, your, tip of your arm to the bottom of your foot, 1,000. If it's 120 volts in North America, same thing, divided by 1,000 ohms. What do you get? Well, you get either 230 milliamps or 120 milliamps current going through you. Well, is it good? Is it bad? Is it lethal? Well, let's, let's think about that. Very few people think about who invented, uh, let's say, the uh, an airbag or a parachute or uh, safety belts, right? Uh, but even fewer people think about who invented GFCI. And uh, there was such a person, naturally. His name was Charles Delziel. He was a professor at UCLA, University of California at Berkeley. And in 1961, he invented and patented GFCI or an RCD, the very device we discussed earlier device that detects a uh, difference between the uh, outgoing and incoming current and powers down the circuit if there is a difference. Uh, so Charles Delzio, uh, he and his group of students studied the effects of electricity on human body. And uh, they had some interesting fi findings. After many repetitions, after many experiments, they've determined uh, that it, for one thing, it depends on the weight of the person, on how much they weigh. So they averaged it to two groups of adults. Uh, those who weigh 100 pounds, roughly 45 kilograms. Uh, most of those happen to be women. Now, on average, women weigh less than men. Uh, and those who weighed 160 pounds or 72 kilograms. And uh, again, the effect of the electricity on the body depended on the person's weight. For instance, electrical sensation, uh, where you begin to sense that you're being shocked, uh, for 100 pound adults, uh, was uh, a quarter of a milliamp for 160 pound adults, adults half a milliamp. A perception let go, basically your instinctual desire to let go or just, just step away from the thing shocking you was 0 0.6 and 1 respectively, one, 0 0.6 milliamps and 1 milliamp. Maximum harmless barrier was 4 to 6 and coincidentally that's the current value of uh, ground fold current allowed on the US made GFCI devices. Most of the GFCI devices made in the U.S., those are made; uh, those that are made to protect people, uh, are set to 5 milliamps. Anytime there is a leak current of 5 milliamps to the ground or more, 
they're supposed to power down that circuit and save the person. Going further down the line, uh, 6 and 7 milliamps respectively would result in a painful shock. Uh, sorry, I misspelled painful, I know. Uh, let go threshold was 10 and 16 uh, respectively. That's a very important threshold. A at that point, at that current value, your muscles do not really obey you. So you, even if you even tried as you may to let go of that wire or electrical fence that's under, uh, under, uh, under voltage, you won't be able to. You may not be able to. Uh, and the current will continue flowing through you. And what it means is that eventually you, you'll go into fibrillation and your heart will seize and fail, which naturally results in, in death. And at 50 and 70 milliamps, respectively, fibrillation is instantaneous. Uh, a lot to absorb, a lot to unpack here, a lot to think about it, but, um, you know, it's it's pretty serious. It's, it's, it's worth thinking about that. Another... Uh, thing of note is that they uh, figured out that it's 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 a function of the person's weight. So it's one milliamp per ten pounds or five kilograms of body weight, which means that a hundred kilo person or two hundred pound person, uh, for them the let go threshold is twenty milliamps, but for a fifty pound child, twenty five kilograms, it's only five milliamps, which also has another great consequence. If a child weighs let's say fifteen kilos or thirty pounds, well even a 5 milliamp uh, GFCI or an RCD may not save that child. So uh, long story short, there are no absolute guarantees when it comes to electricity and even a very sensitive 5 milliamp uh, GFCI device is uh, only a, an average to a minor protection. It does not guarantee against lethal shock at all. Well, on that somber note, thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions, do ask. And until next time, Russian Sparky, take care.